Okay. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, got a great episode today. Um, I recorded this episode many weeks ago, but I'm putting it out now from the Chappelle Show, from The Wire, from his own podcast, uh, the fantastic, the charismatic, the super funny. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Riffin' with Griffin. It's the John and All right, y'all. Welcome to the podcast. Like I say, Mr. Donnell Rollins. Um, when this all happened, I didn't know who was going to be on the podcast, who I'd be able to get, when I'd be able to get them. So I just banked as many episodes as I can, and you know, I just I was I made a bunch of calls. I was like, oh, I got to get you on. I got to get you on. Uh, but turns out people are more available than I thought. So I do have a bunch of episodes banked, and this is one of them. So this was from a few weeks back, but I'm putting it out now. Uh, it's still a great conversation. And I know, you know, you're out there right now and uh, we all have weird feelings. You know, everybody's at different levels of comfort. Everybody's at different levels of financial security. And I know people out there are having a tough time. And even the people that are not having a tough time financially might still be having a tough time emotionally. I mean, come on, there's so many things that we're missing out on. We, we You know, we're not going to restaurants. We're not going to movie theaters. We're not getting the enter. We can't go to sports. We can't. All the things that we use as an escape from our crazy lives, no matter what level you are in finances, those things are gone right now. So people like myself and content uh, makers, we're just trying to put out content and just you know keep it going. Uh, it's, I didn't realize how important it is, and I appreciate all the messages that people send out to me about, hey, thanks for doing the podcast, thanks for doing the gaming. And by the way, if you want to watch me stream some games, I love doing that too. And that's you can find me on Twitch um, and YouTube at Eric Griffin Gaming. So please come check that out, subscribe to those channels, and you know it. it Look, we just we don't know how long this is going to be. I mean, I just found out that, you know, I'm in L.A. County and they're talking about we're going to be in a stay at home order till August. So, wow, it's just it's it's unbelievable, unprecedented time. So we're all here together trying to do the best we can. And thanks for listening to the show. Like, I appreciate you're watching right now and I really appreciate it. Appreciate the messages. I appreciate all that stuff, and I'm just gonna continue to keep putting out content, and you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, this is the world we live in now, so let's uh, get used to it. Or even if we don't want to get used to it, let's at least figure a way to live through it. So this is one of those ways is to continue to do my show, and I have a great guest on. Uh, please enjoy, Mr. Donnell Rollins. And boom, there we go. Hey, uh, welcome to the show, Mr. Donnell Rollins, and his uh. My mind's telling me no. Uh oh, I can't say that. I can't say that. Yo, this phone that I'm on right now, this is my son. My son says he has his own phone, his own studio phone. He said that this call was gonna be his first phone call. Say what's up. What up? Say hello. You gotta come on, man. How that? How do you feel? And this is my friend Eric. He has his, my friend Eric. He has his own podcast. Yeah. All right, so you're not doing good at the off the top of this. You go get ready for virtual school. I'm going to talk to this dude. This dude has taken a lot of money out of your mouth. This guy right here, <laughs> your dad was up for roast, and this guy, the one who looks so nice and friendly, stole yeah. money from your college fund. Him, right here, Eric Holder. Eric Holder did it, son. All right? So you go work on your project. Let me go to work. I love you. Oh, Say bye. Man. You're not going nowhere? Mm -mm. All right, well, stay right here. Just stay right here. Yeah. What's this is up? good. All right, I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> so you're doing home I'm How's homeschooling. That? How's that? How's that doing homeschool? How is that? Yo, I, I'm, I, you know, everybody know they call me a dino dad. I'm an older dad. I'm a dino dad. You know, my friends, grandkids are the same age as my son. But I will say one thing. <laughs> Damn. Uh, <all> this, <laughs> a, a lot older, son. From, 
from preschool to pre-med. That's the difference between my <laughs> friends and me right there. <laughs> but uh, I will say it's a lot easier doing um, homeschooling when you're doing ABCs. I murder ABCs, right? <laughs> Yo, I act like Einstein off of ABCs. You try to do ABCs? Yo, I stick the A's hard. I stick the B's hard. C's, I go in on them, son. Well, that's good. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. So is it like, you a, what, like so you have to like zoom into his classes? Like, how does that work? Or are you like, I, I mean, yeah, how does it work class, for people out there? Well, for, wait, 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 oh, he just wants to be all in my face. It's like, you know, my son's in preschool, right? So they did never. This is the one thing about um, the Corona whole situation with closing down stuff. Right. Some people weren't prepared for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the school that he goes to, it's a pretty established school. Some well, well taught and educated educators, but right. that's when they're in this regular normal um, environment. That's when they're in an environment like, okay, I can touch you, I can see you, I can body language, I can help control you, whatever. But now you go from that type of curriculum to, okay, now we got to engage uh, these uh, three and four year olds the same way like us engaging now through like a monitor. Right. So it's been, it's been, it's been challenging. But for me with him, because he's starting regular school in the fall, I didn't want him as, as, as traumatic as this situation could be for kids. I didn't want him to lose his social skills. I didn't want him to not to talk to his friend that goes to school with. They, right. they used to. They share an orange. Not anymore. We don't share oranges no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you keep it. Everybody got their own lunchbox, and that sucker is yeah, super yeah, steel. Oh, like, <laughs> yo, I told my son, son, if they ask you for snacks, say, yeah, what's in there, son? <laughs> you know? But it's like, like the thing, that it's a it's a new, it's, it's going to be, it is already a new world. And as much as everybody, Eric, is like this, because you and I have talked about it, like, I didn't trust you. You didn't trust me. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. trust I don't wait. I don't nope. trust your kid. Yeah. Just look at the way from the looks yeah. of things. <laughs> listen, I, listen, I'll stop saying. I, listen, I'll trust was equal. You know what I'm saying? Because it was funny because when we was doing this, when we first planned on doing this, we both was making our last stand up money, nigga. <laughs> yo, I know. I know. It was like, <laughs> yo, dude, I, yo, I was. Yo. <laughs> Hey, Eric, hey, Eric, hey, son, did you feel like this? Did you feel like this before this went down? You know how, you know, you're, you're, you're a successful comedian. And more importantly, you got a name where you can work the road, do whatever, go get oh, some money when you want, right? Yeah. And I know you've been in this situation, like, your agent talking about, yeah, you want to take that weekend off? Like, yeah, I played three weeks. You know what I mean? Let me go take a break, right? <laughs> I know. I, yo, when they started, fine, fine, when they started fine, dropping that fine, mandate down, fine, look, fine, my lady talking fine, about, why you look so fine, upset one time, right? I said, Donald Trump oh just said God. it's no live performances for the next three months. I'm yeah. broke, bitch. Yeah, yeah. They act like they act like we get you know. Luckily, like I'm frugal. You know, I'm sure because you got kids that you but you like you know you always got to put money away. But you always got you always got to you always got put something you always got put something away. And more importantly, this is what people don't understand. This is what the whole thing. Put money away is one thing. You have to do that, but you always have to know how to make money. Yeah, you got to figure it out. You know, so many people, they get getting all, oh, what am I going to do? It's going to be so-and-so. And I understand that. But the ones that make it, some people that get inspired, get motivated, and come up with something to make money during times like this. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? It's so easy. To throw, it's easy. So, man, it's so easy for you and I to say, man, I ain't even, like, man, oh, man, what am I going to do? I can't wait for my shows to come. All we can say, and this is where the white people, I know half of you knew this. You knew, I knew. I Wait, have remember you. when I remember I told you about the podcast? I came with you and whispered yo, you in did, your ear. Yo, you I said, yo, "Monetize." Yo, yo, you did, yo, you did, and you, yo, you said it like it was a new drug coming out. Uh, son. Yeah, was like, yo, you was like this, nigga. You, you, yo, you look, you did like this. Son. You did like this. You, your eyes did shift. This is why you beat me out of road, out of road because you a good actor. You did like this, so you looked around like this. You did like this. You look like, come here, nigga. Come here, nigga. Come here. I said, what side you want to go on? Your white side or your black side? I said, you said, you said. Son, I said, Stupid. what ear? Yo, so I was like, what ear should I talk to? Your black ear or your white ear? You looked at me like this, nigga. 
the black ear right now, but it's gonna get some of that white money over there, right? <laughs> yeah, man, you gotta. Then, that's what you gotta do but, in these times. <laughs> and you know what? I appreciate it because a lot of people they selfish. Uh, Bert Kreiser, uh, Theo Vaughn, Chris Lee, all of them just just try to keep the podcast shit into the white community, son. I figured it out, son. <laughs> they knew this goddamn. They knew it was coming on Sunday. They hard. What? What? But I mean, the real but, problem, the real the real issue with it is more. It's not even just the people that are doing it; it's the people listening. I mean, it's like right. we got to get like the urban <laughs> black Latino communities to get invested in podcasts, and I just I don't know if they are or not. You know, I just don't I know. Don't want, yo, just, just just do one nigga at a time. I don't want too many, so I didn't gonna be <laughs> just gonna be oversaturated. So let's do a minimum. Oh, they can only let's, be one. They gonna be like two or three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two or three, and, and they got to go through us first. If they don't talk to us, it's like a board, like. <laughs> nah, we and then, and then it'd be different type of Negroes too. Nah, 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 nah. We've already we, we already got two of your kind. We'll pass. We're gonna wait for a less threatening Negro to come down here. Yeah, I'm but just... you know what? More like I I never took it. I didn't I didn't know about it. Like when you was telling me about it, you was just getting excited about it. And it's just, it's, and, I, and I think one of the things that got you excited about it was you like it is a way to make money, but it's another outlet and platform to be funny. Yeah. This is like you know we win. Like, yeah. <laughs> not many free conversations I gave away, nigga. <laughs> Just call the motherfucker. Yo, think about it, son. You ever call somebody be on the phone for an hour? You like, yeah. nigga, that could have been episode 33, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> With part one and two. <laughs> part one and two. With a teaser. And then yeah. go to the patrol page after that. Yeah, or the man. Page, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's like it's a new world, but it's not even a new world. It's actually turning into this is our world right now. This, but you know what? If you think about it, as much as people are frustrated talking about you can't go out this way, you can't go out that way, and like everything, the word social distancing, right? Yeah. The average millennial was social distancing themselves from everything anyway. Yeah. Yo, Amazon was building, building, building. We was getting built for this. Amazon, a week, no, nigga. You get off the phone and this nigga's dropping Amazon packages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Online dating, yeah. online shopping, malls. Yeah. Ma- the only reason people's going to malls is to get pussy, son. Yeah, and when you was dating, when you were dating, yeah. it's not even like the you were like to go meet. You wasn't even like you were meeting people in person. Like, like how many times are people dating and they on their apps for like weeks, months at a time before they actually do anything? Anything on the dates, I know that on it. So we was partially prepared for it, but like the whole thing is like, you know, you prepare for it, like, yeah, you know, it's like when something's about to happen, you got your hurricane save a life kit and you got all this shit ready and everything to go, but you really don't think it's going to really pop off. Right. <laughs> I remember one year, I, I remember one year, niggas, I was in DC, niggas be waiting for hurricane. He's like, oh, we about to turn up, niggas. Yo, niggas get charcoal, niggas get ice. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, son, niggas is going to get crabs. Cheese whiz. Going, yeah, yeah, cheese whiz. They going to get crabs. Niggas get dominoes, horseshoes. Yeah. Yo, we were, I don't know what it was, El Mino. It was one of them motherfucking Latino names. <laughs> El Mino? I was, I was, yo, I was in, I was in, son, listen, I was in D.C., right? And one of my brothers, he's a brilliant dude, Brown University of Georgetown Law, right? So he's the type of nigga that know this shit coming. He got disaster preparedness plans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he got like little signs. He do shit like in the event, we will all meet here. This nigga got flashlights, all this type of shit, right? So we waiting for this shit to pop off, right? We like, is it coming? Is we look, we, is it coming? We was like, man, this shit ain't coming. Then we heard this. <clears throat> nigga, we ran in the house. All the lights went out, right? And everybody think I played too much. My brother, this nigga get everybody else a flashlight. This nigga give me a Yankee scented candle, son. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, son, this nigga. And not even, you and not the even apocalypse. a candle plate. <laughs> son, not even a candle plate. You're not flitzed on niggas had a candle plate <laughs> with the little. <laughs> you just had the straight candle. No, it wasn't even yeah. in a jar. <laughs> Man, the nigga just handed this shit to me like it was a popsicle, son. The nigga did like this. <laughs> and it was sent to a lavender joint, son. <laughs> it was so fucking disrespectful, man. Yo, I'm like, you. I looked at him like, man, when we gonna stop beefing? It's over, bro. It's over. <laughs> yep. But, you know, like, 
you and I talking, man. Like, it, it, well, it comes down to it. What we going to do? I know. <laughs> and I, I mean, know, and this was... And it was so fucked up. And I know why you a dirty motherfucker, right? This is why you a dirty motherfucker, right? What did I do? Because, <laughs> no, I'm just saying you are, you are, if not a working, a working actor. Right, right. Try to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, like, like you literally, you nigga, and I don't give you props for nothing, but you, it's one thing to be funny and stand or whatever, but to be a working actor and be able to get and continue to get like niggas know you as the acting funny nigga. Yeah, I know. I, I people don't even know me as a stand up. That's how sad it is sometimes. But it, you know what? But but, but but I know that that could go both ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. In a case like this, if it like me personally, nigga, like I'm literally unemployed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a series. I don't have. Neither do I right now. I don't. I'm not, I know, but know. I'm just saying. I know, but. The uh, not the odds of you working in that you're gonna catch something, you know what I mean? Like not no Corona, nigga. You gonna <laughs> catch it joint because you're good at it. You know what I'm saying? You establish face. People know your work ethics. You gonna. Know, I know this may sound crazy. I'm not a psychic. You're always gonna find acting work. You made me want to get fat, nigga. You made me want to get fat. Nigga. <laughs> You, you just rude. That's just you want to talk about disrespectful. You know, what? this no, wait, wait, I let just, me tell this story. You come okay. up to me, you come up to me and say, Yeah, I was up, I was up for that part, but there was a weight restriction, and then you just walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations on that part. But <laughs> I was up for it, but there was a weight restriction. That's what yeah. you said to me. That's just disrespectful. Yeah, it was uh, that's how I felt, sir. I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, I ain't watching that shit, nigga. I had to, hey, we got canceled I, anyway. Two, we only did two seasons. No, oh, look at the war. Excuse me, Mr. Actor. Only got two seasons out hey, of it. Hey, man, it, but in two seasons in three years, man, you know, it was a lot. Yeah, I mean, you, like, the, look, like, the, let me tell you something. The grass is always greener on the other side, man. People well, looking, you know you know what I mean? I do understand what you're saying, but this is what people don't understand. You said only two seasons. I remember years ago when I was doing HBO's The Wire, some time ago, right? Still, a, people still kind of remember. And I remember, like, as hard as I worked to position myself to get an audition, to be considered for something like that, to have an agent, because you know, like, them open calls don't usually cut it. It's relationship. Yeah, yeah. Motherfucker. You got to have, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I got so and so and so and so. And then, like, when I did The Wire, and I was like, I, when I did The Wire, when I auditioned, I didn't audition just against the East Coast. It was East Coast and West Coast. It was whoever was the top niggas with the top agency. You know how that go. Yeah, and for, for sure. me to get, it, and I looked at for me to get it and then be a part of that show and then go on to get the success of that. So I had limited rolling, but somebody told me once they said, "Yo, what's the number? Um, what's the number to the wire? I want to do that. Like, it's a, it's a, a hotline, just to call a wire and just be on a wire. Like, Brr, oh yo, y'all hi. Yeah, you know? dude, that's how my mom used to think about it too. My mom would be like, "Yeah, why, why don't you want an NBC show? Can't you just call? You know, like, oh yeah, let me get, get yeah. Uh, can you patch me through to the people that book shows? Because my mom right. thinks I should be on this show. <laughs> and that's why I always like, you don't matter what you think about somebody's skill set is, you know, you gotta be hats off to people that that once you see somebody on a show like HBO Showtime, man, they had to beat out a lot of people. It wasn't just you versus one person. It well, you know what though, but you know what though, sometimes though. I mean, it's, it's skill, luck, and opportunity. Those things right. come together. You never know because the, you know how I got on I'm Dying Up Here? The, the producers and Jim Carrey were at the comedy store one night on a Tuesday, and they saw right. me perform. Then I got an audition right. the next day, and I was on the show three weeks later. So, But you never know. You just never know how it happens, man. But, the, the, but the, I, you never know what happens. But, again, that's an example of giving yourself every opportunity. When people move from different cities and stuff – what you just said is what people live for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people, and that's what makes the comedy store stage what it is. Of course, you like the fans, mm -hmm. but the opportunity that somebody might just be sliding through a producer and bam, that's what that's what keeps um, the comedy alive. That's what keeps you alive, even working the, working the circuit and doing that because it ain't yeah, the man. money. It right, ain't right. The money. Right. The, mon the money's just like what you need just to live, but we don't. Right. It's not the main thing. It's like all these things we do kind of connect. So if you think about it, like so me, I, should I do it? Should I keep the hat on and take it off? 
Well, ooh, it's shiny as hell. Let's just keep. Oh, yo, Damn! Wait, I was, <laughs> yo, I was about to start yo. singing the Jefferson's theme. Where we're moving I, I went, on up. <laughs> I, 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 I went from Hootie the Blowfish to Beans. I'm moving on up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. God you know, it's damn. Good. I look. I got all type of diff, dude. Look, this is my yeah. Hootie right here, son. <laughs> Yo, this my lord, this my lord, you know, trying to push the 30s right here. Just get him on the corner and just bust it right here, son. It's funny, is you and me both got this going on, too, where it's like, I didn't yo, realize nigga, this was so going. gray. I didn't know yo, this I was got... so gray. Yo, son, this my hairline right here now, son. <laughs> yo, old niggas, they think this they real hairline, son. It started the eyebrows. <laughs> They can start right here, son. They be right here, son. They be right here. Son. How long you been going bald? How long? How long you been going bald? Well, I don't call it bald. You use different words. I don't call it bald. I'll say there's parts. How like, long you been less than a man? Uh, uh, it's been a long time. I've been, I got some years, son. Keep it real. I got some years. They said, "What you doing?" I said, "I'm getting ready for a movie role, bitch. Don't even worry about it." You've been, you been getting ready for a movie role since he was 22. <laughs> Yo, I don't. the one thing. Everybody always see me as an older dude, nigga. I'm a, yeah. I'm a Samuel L. Jackson, this shit, nigga. Yeah, niggas yeah. Like, niggas only got no baby pictures. They don't even exist. I burned it. <laughs> it's just you. If no, it's just you, one of those old white ones I'm where old, like somebody had to guy. hold the thing I up. I don't know. What'd you say? <laughs> they had to hold the thing up. That The picture's so old, it's black and white. <laughs> yeah, no. They like this. They doing this Dre right here. Trying to piece it together. They, like, they, they, they got yeah. an app that could put this together right here, right? Yeah, I feel you. They just, they yeah. try to figure out your age. They just go like, he got a grown son? How does that work? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what, man? It's how you feel, bro. You know, it's how you feel. Yeah, how for you sure. Maintain yourself. Especially in this world of acting, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And I'm telling you, shit like this corona shit make motherfuckers realize, man, am I tripping off of that shit? Or am I really every day trying to live the best that I can? You know I totally saying? agree, man. Yo, son, the worst thing you do is you being petty with somebody and some something tragic happened. Yeah. Especially with this Ronin type of shit going on now, right? Nigga, that might be the last time you see somebody. Yeah. So the only thing, only thing you're gonna get, only thing you're gonna get is motherfucking memories. So which what do you want them to be? Let me ask you this. You know? Let me yeah. ask you this. Like the last year and a half, I thought it's been some of the best time in stand up. You know, we had some of the best specials come out, some of like the <laughs> people were selling tickets all over the place. And yeah. like, do do you think we're gonna get back to that? Because you know, do, oh, like, when when are we gonna see yo, Chappelle do a special again? You know what I mean? When are we gonna see this man, kind that of nigga stuff? Ready? Yo, let me let me tell you something, man. That nigga is so antsy right now. I talk to him every day, right? That nigga ready to do a special from his car right now. <laughs> you know, people probably buy you know, it. <laughs> yeah, but but you gotta look at it like this, bro. It's gonna be certain, certain. You know, it's certain one of a, a certain of in our field to the just they gotta do it. They yeah. don't like it's like how people go see ther- go go to therapy. Yeah. It's our therapy. That's when I'm mad in my relationship. I gotta get on stage. When I'm happy in my relationship, I gotta get on stage. Me too, but bro. Some, you know, that's like some people. It don't fuel them. They don't have to do it. Some people. I give you an example. Chris Tucker and I love Chris Tucker. You know what I'm saying? But and I've been around. You can tell Chris Tucker doesn't have the passion to do stand up anymore. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not that he can't do it or do well, but like he said it one time, I think when we had the Mark Twain, it was like, yo, y'all motherfuckers out all the time. And part of it's probably tough for, for him too, being like a really religious person. Yeah. The atmosphere that's consist, it's kind of a dark thing. It's you know dark I mean? and it's alcohol. Remember when he tried to open up that ridiculous non-alcohol comedy club? <laughs> Oh yeah, the, it wasn't enough. Look at God's ready for that shit. Yeah, right? no man, nobody want to go to now. You need it's it's supposed to be a place you let loose. So I understand He's what you're just saying. Been trying to do, he must have just been trying to do church at night. Yeah, you know dude. Yes, yeah, yeah, nighttime church. No, but here's yeah, the thing, though. I know exactly what you're saying. There's some of us that like, but see, I feel like I. I, like at first when this happened, the first couple of weeks, man, this shit has been hard because I have no creative outlet, and I need that. You know, like going on stage. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you do. You it's, just got to reship. But it's that's right what I here. did. But that's what I'm doing. But I'm just saying right. at first, it's like, you know, could right. you know that like when you go, you go, you leave your family, you leave your kids, you leave your girl and then you right. go and it's just that kind of release of all that, all that stuff. And then you can go back yeah. and you feel sane again. We, we don't have that. We have to refocus. How have you yeah, been well, doing well, it? How well, have you been doing it? I've just been redirecting it, you know, like. For years, I told myself, because I got a young son, I told myself, oh, man, the road is getting burnt out. You know, I want to spend more time with my son. But I was never just going to stop because it's my only source of income. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As as crazy as it was, it was some the light of Corona, uh, this Corona pandemic for me is like, I've never, this is the most time I've been with my son consecutive, consecutively since mm-hmm. he was born. Wow. So I got that part of it. And then like, I really am excited about my podcast. I'm really excited about the growth of it and everything. Yeah. But with the show, with me on the road, sometimes, you know how it is, like, oh, I'm not going to tape on Tuesday. Well, I won't be back in the studio, blah, blah, blah. So you might lose a week or you might lose two weeks. And, like, that's not You can't do that. You got to be consistent. But now it's like, now it's like I got so much time to really, really push my brand. Yeah. So in the event of something like this happens that I've already established having other income. It's too easy to get caught like a road dog. Yeah, man. You look at your family like, nigga, I'm like, I got, I got work all year. I'm but good. You, but you know what's happening? I was, t- I've talked about this already with a few other people, but I want to talk with you about this. See, um, we know a lot of people like that who they also make a good living on the road, right? Yeah. And then, but they still live in like gig to gig, even if they making a nice <laughs> money and they spending that money every week. Like people living right. beyond their means out here in our profession, and now, 100%. and now it's like, what do they do? You know. Um, um, that's some of them gonna take hits, nigga. Some of them gonna call you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna forward them your kids' number. <laughs> yo, yo, some of them are gonna call you. Like, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I'm telling you, man, as much as I love the people checking in and make sure I'm good or whatever, man, when the next city stuff like this. Listen, man, I hope this letter finds you. I'm like, oh, oh how much? Oh, here nigga? we go. Yeah, yeah, dude. You hey, uh, let me um, let me holler at you for a second about holding something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, and, then, and you know, and I know in cases some people need that, and, and I mean some people need a little help. And a lot of cases, some people need just to try harder, think deeper. Like, yeah, is people going to say, oh, it's easy for y'all to say, but everybody had problems. Yeah, somebody's. A, Somebody that's used to making money, if all of a sudden they used to making money and they just paying bills, paying bills, and ain't no money coming in, they know that shit. They're gonna be like, they gonna be like, just hold up, hold up. We gotta slow it down like Donnell Hairline for a second. <laughs> you know? And check this out too. They think that we got some kind of retirement plan too. It don't yeah. work like that. Like we gotta work. That's why your old ass is still out there on the road. <laughs> like, Nigga, you know, I, no, <laughs> there's no four hundred one k for comics. <laughs> but but the. And the reason why I got to keep working because, again, I haven't found my lane to, like, I, you know, I haven't found that lane. Like, money comes, but it's like I haven't found that lane where I, like, like can do it without stand-up. I need stand-up. But yeah, this right I'll here, this is making me think more as, as, as a real business, as with merchandise, as to how me and my brand can make money. It's going to make people think a lot deeper. And yeah. it's going to make people stronger. It's going to make the, the weak weaker. Yeah, I agree, man. I, well said. I, t- I totally agree with that, man. Have you been? Have you been like? Um, have you been binge watching television shows and stuff like that? Like, what are you doing? No, no. Like, what I've been doing is like I got certain certain uh, rotation of like going on live. Usually, my my day consists of I get up, I get up really really early, right? Right. And I quarantine myself in the crib and the car. And when I say the car, it's to like. I have a routine. I'd like to just drive for like about a half a mile, you know, hit the 7-Eleven, get coffee, and I just think. And at that time, you know, I still got a lot of connections on the East Coast, so I call people oh, on the East Coast Nice. early. It looks weird in L.A., but like right when they're getting energized and like, oh, I'm up, I'm up. I know it's crazy, but that's the most solid and the most peaceful time for me. Gotcha. So I'm connecting with people on the East Coast whatever business issues I have, or if I just want to talk to family members on the East Coast, I'm up early enough to do that and get them while they're working. And then once LA starts to get up, I bug these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, I get, you know, and I and then I get my son's, uh, I wake up, I'm waking everybody up. And then yeah. I make my son's um, breakfast, get him ready for his virtual school, you know, go to virtual school with him. And then after I go to virtual school with him, usually like the time we're doing this down, and I have been getting a lot of requests for interviews, Right. I've kind of allotted that time from like two PST to like four or five to do podcast. Yeah. Then I started helping my son with, you know, cooking dinner and stuff, getting them ready. And that's a whole day. Yeah, man. You know, and like that's a solid day. And I can adjust it in kind of way I want because I still control my schedule. But with this 
And I, I even encourage people, you know, if you got young kids, whatever, try not to disrupt the routine too much. Yeah. It can't feel like it can't feel like a party or a birthday. It's got to feel like, oh man, I got to do what I was doing, but it's this way now. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so that's I why know I try to keep because you can't. You got to have some type of structure. Then you'll start feeling a sense of hopelessness. Right. You know, like, yeah. What gonna do? You know what? I you know what you're saying. And I've like, so I make myself. That's why I'm doing this, man. That's why I'm hitting people up like, yo, come on my podcast. Let's let's do this. Right. And then I, I've been cooking more. Like, I've never cooked as much as I'm cooking right now, dude. I love to cook. Yo, it's so funny, man. I knew I got a little off earlier. But when the Rona was first popping, right, we went, when we went tripping off no Rona, you was like, nigga, you do the podcast, come through. We hit go to address, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, this motherfucker did <laughs> show up. <laughs> and then you went from address to, like, <laughs> we could do a phoner, a radio <laughs> by, by pigeon. <laughs> He was like, nigga, just say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, just like, I, I I try to tell people, like, I understand how hard it is for people to want to do podcasts. Not everybody wants to do it because it's so many and people got their own thing. So I always tell people, I try to tell That's them, I say, hey, was. I try to tell people, like, look, if you if you can't do it, I'm okay with no. You know what I mean? Like, right. you know, that's all I'm saying. I was like, I just get people act like, like, everybody's home right now. So if you're not answering your phone, you just don't want to talk to me. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right. You don't even know when that Rona call coming. You, know, you got to pick that shit up. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, it, you it know, is what it is. But and I'm telling you, those were some of the reservations. I was like, man, I don't like. I said, am I going to be one of them niggas or do my podcast? Right. And, and then I'm like, I don't really ask people to do the podcast. It's just like I just talk about shit. And like, yeah, I've seen your I thing. And it's like. I, and I tell people all the time, they like it's a podcast. I was like, when I first came out this, I was like, it's a real. This is a reality show about a podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I find I find somebody not showing up and getting in an argument with me is entertaining enough to make a complete episode out of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm like this. You know, people don't understand, bro. Sometimes, man, uh, let's, throw, let's throw some um, Housewives of Atlanta vibe. Or let's get throw some yeah. Cardi up in that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it's like, I always looked at it like, it's, it's and man, I got so many, I got some big ideas for this podcast from my intro. I take my intros real serious. You know, the relationships I built, and when I first started, I knew I didn't know what I was doing. I knew at yeah. certain times I talked too much, and they was fucking trolling the shit out of me, son. <laughs> and I, was, I remember when, when I got it first inspired, I, I, I was leaving Joe Rogan's podcast, and I thought I had we. I just thought we had just one of the greatest podcasts in the history of podcasts. Right. Me and, me and Rogan hugged up there. He said, "This one you could hug a nigga, right?" <laughs> we hugged. This is probably the last hug on camera, right? <laughs> we, 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 well, it was like sweaty palm hug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, he said, man, because Rizzo went out with a freestyle. He said, man, that might be one of the greatest um, outros in podcast history. And I was like, word. He said, I was like, I was all happy. He said, Donnell, oh, I'm, remember, whatever you do, he said, don't read the comments. You know what I did. You went right to the comments. Nigga, I read. You every can't read those comments. Rogan comments, Yo, man. Sir, those people are I animals. Read, They're animals. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't read. I think I only read like three thousand two hundred and seventy-five, right? <laughs> <laughs> Before I said I shouldn't read anymore, right? Yeah, man. But but with that, I took some of the things some of the people said as constructive criticism. I was like, you know what, you know what, you might be kind of right. I do get overzealous sometimes. Uh -huh. Maybe if I would listen and stay in the pocket, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It helped me work on my listening skills. You know what I'm saying? Which because well, right now you're a better guest than you are a host. That's what it is. Nah, nigga, I'm good at both of them. Nigga, fuck is you talking about, nigga? <laughs> I said better at one. I didn't say you was bad at the other. I nah, said, it, it, all, you... <laughs> it all depends on how I feel. Like I can rock even one of them. Nigga, what is you saying, son? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I'm going to tell you. I've been having fun. I look at it like, if they're expecting us to be down for two or three months, whatever it is, I look at it like that's a good time for me to connect with my son and really go hard with promoting the Donnell Rollins show and making it fire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? How about this? How about this? Niggas was working on their podcast and shit right now and already developing the TV show when they say, okay, and we're back on and go right to work. Yeah, I know. That's what, that's what I, I, you know, I think the people that are yeah. really focused are the ones that are really trying to do it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Get real with it out here, sir. You know what it is. What, what are you, what are you brushing? <laughs> Come on. It's just my imagination. <laughs> Run in. You know, every nigga want to be able to do this up in the mirror. <laughs> 
you know? You haven't you haven't done that in like 22 years. <laughs> I know. That's why, you know what? That's why I ain't mad at it, son. I ain't got no role or nothing. I'm just saying, to do this, I'm so happy, son. Man, I shaved my must. I shaved my mustache off. It's things growing back right now, but I just there ain't nothing else to do. I know? take that. Son. My son be like, "Daddy, what is going on around here?" <laughs> That's quite crazy. But you know, oh, what man. It is? It is yep. what it is. Yep. So we are gonna get back on the circus soon, so you know what it is. Yeah. When do you think it? Well, in your if you had to guess, when do you think that we'll honestly be back in comedy clubs? I think I don't think completely back. I think we're going back to smaller venues. But when a lot of things that people are not considering with this virus and viruses in particular is that you know, like once we start, like we, it's very still kind of cold across the country. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think once we start getting to the point, like we start getting them 85 and 90s and them yeah, heat waves, summer. whatever. It's going to slow the spread of it down. And slowing the spread of it down means you don't won't be so many people dying, which is going to give people a little bit more confidence to, to go out, but not so much go out and be regular, would never be regular no more, but to live your life within those new guidelines. There's going to be new guidelines. Yeah. I and think some place like, I think someplace like the comedy store, the yeah. main, the main room we'd be able to open up because you just have tables and then you have everything six feet apart. So you can have more people in a bigger room than say a, a smaller room. Like I don't see the OR opening up because it's not going to be feasible, but like I can see the main room being the place because you could just spread people out. But they're not going to still, they're going to come like, first off, it's got to be, it's going to have to be quicker testing procedures. Yeah, that's what I was saying too. I you know agree. What I'm saying? Like they, they, they went from from two a, a week to five to three to 45. They got a 15. They niggas might even got an instant joke, nigga. Yeah. They, you know they, I mean? they, they they it's got to be like a pregnancy test. test. It's got to be like a pregnancy test. You know, you just like, like put it like, in your tongue. You're like, oh shit, I got it. I got to go. Oh, it might be like clear at the airport, nigga. You yeah. might open your eyes up. <laughs> Oh, I love clear. See, that's a you a traveling man. You, you yeah, gotta yo, have you, clear. You yo niggas be have you shucking it clear, have you shucking and jive, and they be like, open yeah. your eyes up, nigga. You I like, know. Yes. <laughs> but I prefer the eye because my fingers never do it right. My fingers, I do it the eye too, son, but yeah. I don't like when they say make your eyes bigger. I'm like, all right, nigga, just use my fingers, man. Yeah. You know. But See, I, I, I guess the darker, like I'm a darker Negro, so the the shucking of the eye means a lot to me. You act, <laughs> you act like you know, you act like you like I don't know what that yeah, means. Donnell. That never had my eyes are, but my, yeah, yeah. my, eyes, are my eyes are cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, but it's you gonna know. be the confidence of and that and a vaccine. Niggas gonna have to have a vaccine. That's what people are still gonna. It's gonna probably be some people that kind of risky. But until they be like this nigga, they got a shot for it. You know what I'm saying? Like I agree. I it. totally agree. I don't think I don't think like sports and entertainment are truly going to come back until there's a vaccine. Yep. You know, and then when or, then, or at least nigga talking about a, a Doctor C B joining something, niggas yo, you know, yeah. <laughs> Doctor C B talking just some sea moss, nigga. That'll get rid of that corona. Yeah. So it, or it has to be some sort of like um, pre- like preventative care or some kind of like. You know, some kind of like like they they're gonna make Theraflu even better. Where if you no, get but the it, preve- you no, know, Eric, Eric, the preventive care is taking the precautions that we're taking now to not get sick. You know, what I'm saying we yeah, laughed yeah, at yeah. niggas try to think about it. How many times we laughed at Neil Brennan? I know, I know. We, laughed, we made fucking we made, Neil we, Brennan had it right all along. <laughs> nigga, we was like, we was like, we was like. We was like hood niggas making fun of a nigga for getting a scholarship to college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old, old, fa- old fancy, nigga. old fancy motherfucker. <laughs> old eighteen syllable reading ass nigga. How about this? How about this? How many times were you at the airport and you made fun of Asian people that had oh, the masks the- on? They had the masks times? on, and they had how the masks on for years. Every time. Always, every time I saw him, I was like, "Man, ain't nobody ordering no beef and broccoli through the motherfucker surgical mask, face having ass nigga." They all knew. of that. They, now yep, they I'm but you know, watching you know Asian people from now on. <laughs> but you know why? You know why they knew the same way we gonna know now. They lived through it. Yeah, but they've been doing that it. for years, man. For years, they, lived through, they got all they talking about how not to get sick. Nigga, eat the right and do this shit. Nigga. Yeah, man. Yep. But it was good, man. I mean, you know, we gonna get like it's gonna it's not it's it's gonna be some tragedies. It's gonna be some. Things that are people are not going to be able to understand, or whatever. But what all it's going to be is going to be a learning experience. And the only thing you can do is try to get better and do better. Yes, so I, ag- do. I agree. I agree. I think yep. it's. Cha- I think, and I also think I think it's strengthening 
you know, relationships. Uh, I think it's making people work on themselves. It's making people oh, actually look at their lives. You know what I mean? It's it's strengthening some and it's straight killing some too, son. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, yep. you need to know. If this ain't the one, now you know. <laughs> yeah, you'll figure it out. It's like if yep. I can't be with you, if if I if you ain't pandemic boo. You know what I mean? You ain't going to be regular boot. You know what I'm saying? That's a liar. That's funny, son. We made it through the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. But I actually think yep. that the whole world should shut down for a week every year. I mean, it's doing wonders yeah. for the environment. It's doing wonders for like, you know, we, we, not to this point where it's crushing the economy, but just every year we should go, all right, we're taking a vacation. Everybody has to stay indoors for a, for a week and reset. That would, yo, that, would be, that would be so dope. If that, that, that would be so dope, man. That's a crazy and brilliant idea at the same time i know but it just it takes something like this i almost feel like the it's like and then here in california it's like so we got this we got to stay at home order which we were one of the first ones to do it and it's <laughs> fucking raining so i'm like god damn Calif- california's like yo stay inside <laughs> i know you're right about that like even yo even when you feel like you like this i want to walk to, it's too ugly <laughs> yeah it's, it's too, too ugly, ugly outside <laughs> shit Fuck being outside, man. This shit's crazy. True, Niggas walking around with wet masks, nigga. Nigga, how you a mask wet? Yeah. I got a, I, I use a scarf, you know? Oh, yeah? I, I just like how we all look like we ready to rob a check cash in place. <laughs> I know. So they, yo, they going to start selling clear masks, nigga. They gonna start selling- <laughs> yeah, that's just for black people. <laughs> in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, nigga, they pay, you better put a clear mask on, nigga. <laughs> shit, man. My that transparency. <laughs> I didn't have masks like a motherfucker. Niggas still be saying, "What's up, Ashy Larry?" My <laughs> voice is Ashy. <laughs> yeah, in that fo- in that head, it's just like you can't. You Come can't, on, uh... son, don't do that. That's not <laughs> nice, son. Oh man, what do you? Do? You know, it's like hopefully you'll be able to. I mean, that's such an iconic thing for you. Like, look, I was on Workaholics, and it was like I, I'm always gonna be Montez from Workaholics. You know right. what I mean? It's like right. it's it's so you you were a part of something great, also. You know. Because, right. like, cause like, kids still watch Workaholics today, and it's, like, their favorite show. But you right. were a part of something so iconic. And, like, how does that h- – h- do you think about that often, Do your the time with on Chappelle and the relationship you have with him now? Every day. And when I say that, not to every day to dwell on it, but it's so funny because that show became so engraved into pop culture. Yeah. So engraved into a new form of comedy with meme and memes and stuff like that. It became that popular – that it's like if as much as you want to forget about it, something's going to come up, and then you know in this business it's so hard to be recognized by anything. So the minute yeah. you can, people can recognize it, and at the end of the day, whatever that is can put people in the seats. I can't be mad at that. It was, it was one of the things that people connected with, and then they got to see the other things I did, and see where my work ethics are, and that a nigga is funny. And you know? I'm noticing now too that like Chappelle is like, how many years ago was that now? Like, uh, like 15, 15. It's like, so so what's cool about that now is that you know new people are finding it but it's also like you know the, the kids are like older now so you know you know what I mean like <laughs> I get to people people come to me talking about man I grew up with you and this nigga got like a kid my son age I'm like damn <laughs> yeah man you know you know we've been yeah. in people's lives for a long time it's it's, it's a it's yeah. a strange thing but I take you know? it like I said it's hard to be recognized with anything I take it like to be a part of like something that's like iconic and something that, for the most part, um, will go down in television history. You know, I was a part of The Wire, one of the most critically acclaimed television shows in the history of television, and Chappelle's show. So, you know, if nothing else, when I leave here, whatever, I'll be a part of history. That way, my son will know that, and people yeah. will be like, "Yo, there's some cool stuff," you know. Yeah, man, for sure. You sure damn, you sure damn did, man. Well, look, man, I, 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 I hope we get back. You know, I hope we I know, get back. Hope, to, you know? hope, hope is slavery. Where it's only a matter of time, bro. Yeah, but it's I just, but time. but what I'm saying though is like, you know, you even when I'm looking at TV right now, and I'm looking at say whatever show, and then on that show, I'm seeing all the extras on the show, and then maybe there's like a scene where there's like you know at a mall, and there's a lot of people in the scene, and I'm thinking to myself, what is the entertainment business going to look like? In the near future, like, what are the, is, it, is it all going to be like, <laughs> all the scenes are going to be everybody six feet apart? <laughs> you know nah, I mean? nigga, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, the, the, we, we, people, are feel, people will start to feel a little bit more comfortable under certain circumstances. People are going to fuck with this for six feet. But it's something going to have to, it's going to have to be a vaccine or something to come along. Like, if I catch it, I'll be all right. 
You know, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right, right. You, you know, that happened with it happened with AIDS. People don't roll a dice like that. But like, when the last time you heard about somebody dying from AIDS? You know, like, yeah. like there's there's, there's 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 treatment, there's preventive things. It's like, yeah, they got fun. They got they got those commercials on right now about that stuff. Like, you know, you know, you living with AIDS, and you you won't get you right. won't you know even if you have it, you're not gonna spread it. You know, it's like you are gonna get right. herpes, gonorrhea, and everything else, but you ain't gonna get that AIDS. Yeah, but look how long it took. It took <laughs> Look yeah. how long it took. It looked like twenty some years. You know what I'm saying? I uh, know, but they Yo, work. But in, they working this, fast on this flu vaccine. I, 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 we got every scientist shit. in the world is working on this shit right now. Nigga, somebody gonna come up with that joint, so they go have an app for it, nigga. Yeah, it's coming. But I, you I, think about it. When it's crises like this, think about the scientists, the money making. I, I know people like, this, but what about the people? Yeah, but they still want to make money. The money making to whoever get it. Whoever get the cure, nigga, do niggas good, son. I know. I want to invest in that company right away. I hope they put it out. I want to get maybe get some stock in that got, company. Nigga, got, we got the capsules, nigga. I got the, my nigga. You know the hood. They be like, my man got the spray. <laughs> he gonna open up his trench coat. What you need? What you need? Yeah, like, you need a ventilator? Right what you need? <laughs> if you ain't got in there, yeah. But we gonna get through it. It's gonna take people like you, myself, people that is true to this. Like when people when they try to always. I always try to tell comedians, oh, everything funny, everything funny. Yes, nigga. With yeah. a doctor, is everything serious? Yes. With a lawyer, yeah. is everything words? Yes. Yeah. Everything is funny with us. That's what we do. We don't think like y'all motherfuckers. We don't yeah. think. We had a funeral. Like, we ain't looking for a joke, but we know it's one in there. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's funny you, know? you say that. You know, that's so funny you say that. You know, the first time that I knew I could be a, a working comedian was... I, w- I was speaking at a kid's funeral, you know, uh-huh. and, you know, I'm crying and then I had to like talk about him. And when I started right. talking about him, man, I was killing this funeral. <laughs> yo, you, yo, ripping I was this funeral, killing nigga? this funeral, dude. I was yo. like, and I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I could do this for a living. I could do man. this because I had, yo. every, you know, and you know what's funny? I tell my comedian friends about that and they all like, who books that? <laughs> They want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the number? What's the number who's, to it? Who's the book of that funeral? So I'm just telling you, man. Corona, I know what you're Corona saying. Corona booking that. Corona going to be booking that, Joan. But you know what's weird, though, is like what you say about like we're not like you. We're not like normal people. And that's why most of my friends are comedians is because you can't be around regular people. And then you say something off-putting and they don't understand where you're coming from. And, and it's not their fault. And I don't blame them. I'm just saying. Explain them. Yeah, you know what I mean? We just... We just think about things differently. I, I have a, I have, I have a joke in every moment, you know. Nigga, I'm saying, I just this is the thing, and I'm gonna roll because my son is asking for attention. This is I my got thing, you. and this has been with my podcast, the Donnell Rollins Show, and I encourage people to follow it, to subscribe to it, stream it, whatever. But my line, I end every show, not every show, but when I do the um, the subject matter, a joke could be too soon, but it never could be too soon for a funny observation, and that's right. what we do, son. Yeah. I totally agree. All right, everybody. This has been Donnell Rollins, and and thanks, man. We'll talk soon, all right? I appreciate you, my nigga. Yeah, dude. Talk soon.